On July 7th and 8th, it's this year's version of the Afro-Latino Fest NYC. It's their fifth year, and they're promoting what they're calling an unapologetic Afro-Latinx lineup. Now, the music happens in Bed-Stuy on day two, while day one is in Harlem and features symposiums and, of course, film screenings. So right now, let's find out what they're not apologizing for. Mm -hmm. Joining me now are Amilcar Priestley, the co-director of Afro-Latino Fest NYC. Welcome back to BK Live, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Much We're also it. happy to have Mael Caprado, the founder and co-director of the Fest. Welcome in. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Very happy to see you guys here. Thank you for bringing that clip. That was amazing. We were dancing a little bit in our seats there. So this is just one component of this year. So take me to day one up in Harlem. Why are you making me get on a train? <laughs> so what's happening uptown? Um, so day one uh, is going to be up in Harlem, starting at, at the Schoenberg Center for Research and Black Culture, 135th in Lenox. And that's going to be starting 9 a.m. sharp, and we'll be going until 3.30. Uh, that's going to be the Afro-Latin Talks panels uh, symposium. So we'll have four panels, and running um, uh, more or less not simultaneously. There'll be some overlap. We'll also be having the the Libera Song Film Festival. We've shown films in the past, but you know we're trying to expand different facets of the festival. And mm -hmm. so um, this year we're going to be showing three films in succession. Um, and so the panels this year will be on uh, the environment, uh, displacement, climate change, uh, black women in, in museum representation, cool. and Black Lives Matter in Latin America, which is year three um, of this conversation, or the, the third version of, of this conversation, but we're taking a slightly different approach, talking about it from a spiritual, from a perspective of spirituality. Okay. And, um, and then the final, um, presentation is going to be on uh, women and um, community economics. Phenomenal. So, Maelka, this is five years five now. Five years. But it seems to me like five years, like there's never been a time when Afro-Latin people have not been a part of this New York experiment, certainly. Absolutely. And we're only five years into your fest. I feel like it's never not been a thing. Mm -hmm. How does it feel five years on? We're very happy, very excited. and. Absolutely, very feeling very a lot of gratitude mm -hmm. towards everyone that that has contributed to the festival and also the audience. Yeah, you know, it, the growth of the festival has been a fantastic experience to to observe, to yeah. to watch, and and also how the festival has grown from one day to three days, from only performances to films and, and to panels. Um, very exciting. I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. Well, one part that I'm excited about is another uh, one of the visual aspects you're going to be sharing. We actually have a trailer mm -hmm. that we're going to show you in just a second. But before we get to that, I want to know about how you are mixing it up this year. You continue to have these great deep conversations mm -hmm. and expand our perspectives on what it means to be Afro-Latino mm -hmm. and in this context in New York and incorporating the Black Lives Matter as well. So I'm going to ask each of you, you can start for me, like what you're happy to see the festival stretch into this year at number five? I feel that uh, going with the theme of um, highlighting the contributions of women, mm -hmm. I feel like that is, is the most important aspect of this year's festival, that we are taking that step uh, to be unapologetic in that aspect. Yeah. And, and having an all-female uh, black and brown lineup uh, I think that that is a dream come true for the both of us. Yeah. Um, and having the community respond to that in such a beautiful way yeah. um, is refreshing, absolutely. So what is this concept of the unapologetic? We said we would ask you what you're not apologizing for, but <laughs> why, why this year, five years, and you're like, you know what, this is what we're putting out unapologetically Afro-Latino. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, uh, you know, this, the conversation about Afro-Latinidad, uh, Afro-descendancy Afro is not necessarily a new conversation, but it's something that's, that's, that is uh, gaining uh, a renewed kind of sense of momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think it's important to, to, for it to have its space within the larger uh, kind of discourse about uh, race, ethnicity, and identity, um, and what that implies from a kind of social, political, and economic perspective. 
Um, and so, you know, with this festival and with the work that we do and with the work that, that, the, that others in the community have been doing, it's, it's, the goal is to make sure that, um, because for a long time we've kind of been in a, in a, in a kind of in a fallen through the cracks, so to speak, in, in, in broader conversations, mm -hmm. we carve out our own space. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in collaboration with, in solidarity with, but also making sure that we are heard. So, speaking of being heard, we're also going to be seeing something, too. Here's a clip from the shadow of color. Blank and zwart, die verhouding, vond ik, vind ik eigenlijk een gepasseerd station. Wat is hier wat ik je zeg? Ik zie man af, waar die hebben met school hebben, die hebben ze niet lager. Nada que está preto não está bom, é aquela. Normalmente, um coisa escuro. Bom, dá-me ver como é que é. Um ano e quatro. So we said this was about the diaspora, so people are all over the world. There's no part that hasn't been touched. So I wonder about bringing that in. Like he said, we're beyond black and white. Like it's much deeper in 2017. There's not a part of the world almost that hasn't been touched by the diaspora here. So I wonder how you bring that in and the influence of that on the culture, specifically the Latino culture. Well, we, when we curate the the event, the mm -hmm. festival, we are very sensitive to mm -hmm. to also uh, including into into the the program uh, people from different countries. Uh, like we have a film from Brazil that we just saw, right. and the Caribbean. So that, the, all of those influences are part of Afro Latinidad, and uh, it's important for us to highlight that as well. Uh, we're from Panama, so we we understand uh, the influence that the the Caribbean, the West Indies, have in in Latin America. Right. You know, so it's it's super important for us to to show that aspect, you know, why we like reggae, why we like soca, right. um, and also these conversations in the diaspora that are just everywhere. You know. So I also want to talk about the fact that you guys killed it on Kickstarter. Yeah. Like, your campaign was super successful. That just gives you a little inkling to everyone who's been waiting for this and saying, finally, I can see myself right. take my $5. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how you're transforming that into a mission that lasts beyond the two days where we can all come together at the festival and really, like, blowing this thing out all year. Right, right. I mean, that one of the things that, that we're, <clears throat> we were able to accomplish with the Kickstarter was we, we had a sense because of the years past and, and even from year one, yeah. the, the, like you said, the, the interest that was there that was bubbling underneath the surface. And so the Kickstarter kind of helped, helped us uh, reaffirm or confirm that. Yeah. Um, it was, a, I mean, this year is in particular, every year, but this year in particular, I mean, this festival is presented by the people. Yeah. Right. And so that's something that makes it really, really special. And to keep that, that going, you know, we have to continue to harness this community. We, we are part of a larger community. And so we, we want to, to play our role in continuing to harness this energy and to keep this momentum going so that, you know, we can have conversations that involve the cultural element, that involve the sociopolitical and the economic element, that involve right. taking this conversation beyond identity mm -hmm. um, to broader conversations. This year, uh, this year, is our fifth year, it's the third year of what's called the international, the second year of the International Decade for People of African Descent, which mm -hmm. runs from 2015 to 2024. So there's a lot of movement um, um, kind of burgeoning around the hemisphere, right. um, whether it's here, whether it's in Panama, Colombia, Brazil, Costa Rica, um, Dominican Republic, Cuba, what have you. Right. And so, and so we're, we are playing our role in, in doing that. And one of the things like on the, on the Friday, the, the 7th, 
we're, we're welcoming and honoring Susana Baca, mm. who is the, uh, she's a two-time Latin Grammy winner, but she's also the former Minister of Culture in Peru. Awesome. So we're giving her a Lifetime Achievement Award, but also she will be uh, presenting a book um, called Lo Africano en el Peru, The African in Peru. Um, and so we're very, very blessed and excited to have her um, grace our festival this year. Uh, you got it all, expanding the mind, you get to dance, you get to sit and watch, so unapologetically so. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you uh, to tell us where to go and what we should be doing in anticipation. Just lay it out for us so people can come out. Okay, so get ready on Friday at 9.30 at the Schomburg Center in Harlem uh, for a conference and a war show. Well, the award show is later. Mm -hmm. And so you the, got us programmed all day. All day, all, all day. All day, we got you, we got <laughs> you. We so yeah. don't want to let you go. Start so. off at the symposium at the Schomburg. At the Schomburg, and then at 6, um, we're going to have a powerhouse arena uh, in Dumbo. Yeah. Uh, Susana Vaca, a dialogue with Susana Vaca, which is an amazing, an amazing woman, yeah. and the award show. Is she gonna sing? She's not gonna sing. Okay. But we're gonna Come talk to her. Get and some thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. beauty, <laughs> the beauty of it is that we're gonna be able to listen to her, mm. to talk to her, to ask questions, and right. to really exchange. Um, you know, information with her and learn about Afro Peruvians. So, and then mm. on Saturday, the 8th, uh, it's on. on <laughs> we're going to start, side. yeah, in bedside. Yes. We're going to start at 12 and we end at 11. At Restoration okay. Plaza. Restoration 1368 Plaza. Fulton, get your tickets. 13 sure. performances, yeah. drumming, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. carnival. We have the Queen of Merengue. Style there. Yeah. yeah, the Queen of Merengue, Millie Quesada, two time Latin Grammy winner, the Queen of Soca. Allison Hines, okay. uh, Johnny Osborne, Amara La Negra, um, Nitty Scott, um, Melvis Santa, Calma Carmona. Uh, we have a whole Suzuka host. Poderosa. Suzuka Poderosa. Oh, look, we got everybody's picture. Yeah, yeah, okay. we got everybody. So make sure you hydrate and find yourself in bed style yes. on yeah. Saturday. Yes. And we're looking forward to this year's t shirt. You got to outdo yourself as well. With yeah, we'll, the we'll, 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 we'll try we'll these. Right. This was made by uh, Tony Peralta from the Peralta Project. So. Many thanks, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we hope to see all of you guys out there. All right. Make sure you get your tickets. That's July 7th and 8th. Yes. July 7th and 8th. All right, we'll see you then. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Today.